love them. They're great. They have a new CD out. Hey, guess who's our first guest? Well, it's no secret. I absolutely adore her. In addition to being one of the most beloved stars of stage, screen, and song, she's just written her third in a series of children's books. This one is called Little Bo. Please welcome back to the show the one and only Julie Andrews. <laughs> It's good to see you. How are you? I'm really good. Thanks. I had a great summer. I had a great did you? summer, yes. Well, I thought you were doing this. Yes. My one thing I did this summer is I went to uh, Julie's daughter's benefit. That's right. The Bay Street Theater out in the Hamptons. It's a great theater. Boy, is she great at one of those things. I mean, you were the best auctioneer I ever saw, Rosie. Well, I was a little embarrassed to be as crude as I get in front of you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you're Julie Andrews and everything. You know what I mean? You should talk to my friend Carol Burnett about that. She says that I'm actually a lot bawdier than she is at times. Oh, really? Yeah, so. But you know, the image that everyone has. But I made a joke. I told everyone that I got a telegram from Julie saying, you know, Rosie, please come do this auction. Feed the birds, top ends of eye. Knowing I can't resist. But it was a wonderful event. It oh, really was. Oh, God, you did wonderfully. And they were so grateful. Yeah. And, and you made them uh, more money this year than, than anybody ever had before. I humiliate people into spending. It's what I do. I say, you, you're a cheap bum. Give and me yet the money. she does it so well. I mean, <laughs> no, people, you, people adore you. People enjoy being insulted. They do. <laughs> Speaking of Carol Burnett, you were wonderful on the Tonys with her. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. that was a great thing. Thank you. It was the first time that, that you had sung, well, just a little bit. You, That's right. Yeah. Actually, there was a terrible misconception about that because I'm not really singing. But we were asked to do this, uh, these Stephen Sondheim lyrics, and you can't just... You can say Stephen Sondheim, but we wondered if, if all across America people would know what we were talking about right. if we didn't sing the songs as well. So I said to Carol, look, I'll pitch them as low as I possibly can, and we'll see what we can do. So I was down here somewhere, and she kept saying, do you believe these keys? But people thought that I, that I was really singing full-time again, and although I'm getting better, it's not quite that. Right, but you are getting better. That's yeah. the good thing. Yeah. I know that you must have heard about the craze now in Europe with the sound of music. Like I have. Tell well, everyone about this. Well, there's a, there's a sound of music that's just been done in London. I don't know if it's been done anywhere else, uh, Rosie. And they do um, karaoke sing-along with it and things like that. People come dressed as Maria. Yeah, it's like Rocky Horror. That's exactly it's, right. They have the words up and people come dressed as like Liesl. Yeah, I'd and love to have been a fly on the wall and just been there that night, you know. But Can I, you imagine if you showed up to do that? <laughs> and if I was there possibly playing Liesl, I don't know what role, but maybe I would be. Yeah. Wouldn't that be hysterical? I'd, I'd have to put on my Elizabeth Taylor wig, I think, and, and go with somebody else. Yeah, because they're, those are the sound of music freaks like me. You know, people who know every single word yeah. and every but single line. But it would have been fun, huh? Yes, and when the countess, you know, the baroness gets on there, everyone hisses. Because oh. a friend of mine I went. I know, I heard this. Yeah, whenever yeah. they throw things at the screen, whenever the baroness is on, you know. Booing, hissing, and carrying on. It's yeah. a something. Who would have thought that, you know, the legacy of that film? I know. And who would have thought that it... it I mean, I guess it's a great evening. You know, you have to follow the little bouncing ball and right. sing all the songs and right. that kind of thing. And people are still coming over to you about that and about uh, Mary Poppins yeah. all the time, yeah. right? No matter well, what. Well, I else. guess they were, you know, fortunately such classics that, that they just don't go away, you know. And There's always a new generation, I suppose. You have people saying to you that they liked it or that their mom liked well, it? Well, now these days, it's, it's um, you know, it used to be my children adore you and blah, 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 and we love the movie. And now it's, you know, my mother just thinks you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> so it just shows how many years ago it, it was. Right. Now this book, uh, Little Bo, how did this book come about? This came about, uh, I, I got the idea for it several years ago, and it's sort of been uh, uh, fermenting up there, and I've been thinking about it. It's the first in a series of books, certainly I think the series of four, and it follows the story of a little kitten that, that uh, is um, uh, a ship's cat. And she, she's um, found, she's a little orphan, and she's found by a um, good-looking young sailor who, she's so tiny that he just tucks her in his jacket and takes her everywhere with him. So it's going to be a sort of um, travels of, of, of uh, Bo. And how did you come up with the idea for this? Um, I was on a boat, and uh, uh, the, the crew of the boat had... Um, a little stray cat that they'd found in, in Turkey or on a pier in Turkey somewhere. It was just a real little wild cat. But it had adapted to ship's life, and it actually swam in the sea. And it was a real rough little, little uh, you know, cat. Not, not like this uh, beauty, but it just gave me the idea. I thought, what an amazing thing. C cats don't usually like water. This one swam in the sea every day. Uh, it sort of kept it clean, and it loved the taste of salt and, went, and cleaned itself. 
And so it, this was the inspiration, was this that little This was the one. inspiration for Little Bo, and I thought that's a wonderful idea for a story. And, you know, it's, first it's Little Bo, and then it'll be Little Bo goes to France and Italy and... and, and I love the way you say France. France. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> I'm from Long Island, it's France. It doesn't sound <laughs> but it's not the first you've, you've written. Uh, these are two other children's books. There's more teenage books that you have That's written. That's right. This one's for seven-year-olds, the new one. Right. These are for slightly older children. And I'm working with my daughter, Emma, th whose benefit you did. Um, uh, I'm working with her on an even younger children's book, which will be out next year. Oh, really? Yep. That, oh, about the truck. Yep. That's right. Yeah, you yep. told me about that. Yep. And the illustrations in this are simply beautiful. They really are. Who's the illustrator? A man called Henry Cole, who's a, become a great friend. And uh, I just think his illustrations are wonderful, and they're just right. There's some, uh, he's done some beautiful things in there. And look what uh, Julie and uh, the illustrator have given us to put up on eBay, an original piece of the artwork from the book, Little Bo, that is going to be on eBay.com, which is beautiful, yeah, really I, lovely. I thought you might like to um, auction it off yes, or something like that. we'll definitely yeah. auction all month on eBay.com. All the proceeds are going to go to breast cancer, because October is breast cancer awareness. I know, month. I heard that, Rosie. Yeah, it's wonderful that you Great that. thing. Yeah. We're going to take a break and be back with Julie Andrews. Don't go away after this. <laughs> Lovely Julie Andrews, and I hear that you're writing an autobiography. Yes. True. I mean, yep. True. So happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> now, it, I have, I'm getting all the, you know, pulling all the photographs together and getting all the thoughts and making endless notes. It'll be a while before it's really out. But, and how is it to go through all that stuff? And I'm going to do, oh, it's fascinating because you don't think you're going to remember everything. Once you start, uh, it, it prompts an idea and, you know, it prompts something else that comes up. And, uh, right, are there stories that you had forgotten? That's right. Really? Yeah, yeah. Anyone you can remember or any specific one? Oh, God, so many, but uh, silly ones? Yeah. Um, uh, my mother uh, used to pack for me uh, when I, because I was a young performer and I, a very, very young performer, and, and so she would put my clothes in. And, uh, I said, Mom, I'm old enough, I can do it myself. So I packed my frilly little dress and my white socks and all of that. Got to this uh, concert. It wasn't a, it wasn't a theater, it was at a, in a concert hall. And I had forgotten to pack my little white ballet slippers that I used to wear, which kept me short. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was pouring with rain and it was a bank holiday and there wasn't a store open. There wasn't another performer on the bill that would lend me a pair of shoes. And I had heavy rain shoes with this little frilly dress. So my mother said, well, what are we going to do? And I, she said, did you bring the, the white stuff that you paint your shoes with, you know, that you clean your ballet shoes with? And I said, yeah. She said, I'm going to paint a shoe on your socks. <gasps> and <laughs> and she did? And, well, the thing is, I had a little hole at the back of the sock and a little oh. hole in the toe of the sock. And she did. She painted a, a, a sort of whiter shoe on my by now rather gray pair of socks. And the thing is that wherever I went, I left these little white footprints everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and there were no foot footlights in the, in the concert hall. And so I could see people saying, do you think she's not wearing shoes? Or is she wearing shoes? I've never been so glad to get off stage in my <laughs> life. Now, I never forgot them again. Your mother was a stage mother in the best sense of the word, right? And yeah, she was a good stage mother. Yeah. Yeah, she, she, uh, she should have been uh, a, a, a really important pianist herself. She was very, very talented. But her parents died when she was very young, and she had to take care of her sister. And it, life sort of dealt her a raw deal. And I guess I, I was the one that sort of did it instead for her. Right. Yeah. And you have a lot of photos and stuff from Tons. you. Did you have reviews? Did you keep reviews? Oh and yeah. And as uh, as luck would have it, I, I do have all of those. I'm only going to take the biography up until I come to Broadway to be in My Fair Lady, because it's those early years that I think are. More and more interesting than than I, and then I did and then I sang and then you know yeah well we like that and then I did sing too yeah <laughs> so that'll be the book too uh, all right exactly maybe we did a, a little thing I just did a tiny thing uh, the my favorite Broadway which at Carnegie Hall that's was, right we yeah. did it together it yeah. was wonderful it's coming out it's um it's all the great leading ladies of Broadway and everybody from Broadway and old Broadway everything and they're all in it and it's all the great divas and Rosie was on it I hosted it. Yes, and Liza Minnelli, out, yep. and Audra McDonald, and it's Elaine, December, Stritch Elaine Stritch. Oh, God, so many people. And it's coming out December 1st, I think. Yes, it's yeah. on PBS, and it's called My Favorite Broadway, and you should uh, look for that because you'll get to see the it's lovely... It's a good evening, actually. It is, a yeah. wonderful. It's we great a to be time. in the audience. Yeah. Little Bo is the book. Julie Andrews is the legend. We'll be uh, back after this break, and we're going to show you how to do a breast exam. <laughs>